in the last year or so, or especially the last few months, a uh, huge focus has been put into multi-core or multi-parallelism in Python because of the work done in 3.12 to get the interpreter CAPI out the door, and then more work in 3.13, not only to get the interpreter's Python module out the door, but also uh, no gil Python is coming. There's this huge push, huge drive to get multi-parallelism in Python going for many reasons, and there are many peps, and I've done you know, numerous videos talking about all that already. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to look at what we have at the moment. So in 3.12, we still have threading, multiprocessing, and async. Async is you know, very different. I've done a video on async already, but I haven't done any videos on threading and multiprocessing yet. And I did want to kind of have a look at those, have a look at the interfaces, have a look at speeds, kind of see if we can you know, figure out where the problems in these current implementations lie. Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna show you how to do threading, how to do multiprocessing, and I'm also gonna do some nice little performance benchmarking for you. So first I'm gonna do threading. So we're gonna import time for, uh, just for benchmarking purposes. We're gonna from threading import lock and thread. We'll come to locking later, but uh, for now, we'll just leave it as uh, thread. And then we want to do from url lib dot request import url open. This will just be for some IO stuff that I'll do uh, later on. Uh, so we're going to define a function called do CPU work. And I'm not going to bother with the typings. And this is just going to do some CPU work. Uh, so for i in range 20,000, do 2 to the power of i. And then we have if name equals main. Uh, have threads equals actually no, let's let's not do it threads for now. Uh, I want to show you how long it takes to run through ten iterations of this serially, and then I'm going to show you how long it takes to run ten iterations of this in a thread. Uh, so we're going to do start equals time dot perf counter, which I realised was a thing not too long ago, embarrassingly recently, I think. And four underscore in range 10. And then we're going to just do CPU work. So that's just going to do uh, all the CPU work 10 times sequentially. And we're going to do print. Uh, I want to do yeah, da, 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 time dot perf counter minus start. And then we're going to do some fancy string formatting uh, to bring it to two decimal places. And then we're going to output it in a number of seconds. So if I do pi thread, if my terminal wants to respond, there we go, that was weird. So I do that now, because this is just doing it serially. It takes 3.8 seconds to do that twice. Now bearing in mind this is Python 3.12, and I am recording at the moment, which I have realized does slow things down sometimes. Uh, but when I was doing this earlier, I was getting maybe like 3.5, 3.6 seconds um, to do that. If we do that again, just for the sake of uh, uh, consistency. Uh, this isn't as scientific as I perhaps normally do it, but this is fine for now. So you can say, you know, it's, it's doing about 3.8 seconds. So one thing you could do if you wanted to speed it up, or one thing you might try to do if you wanted to speed it up, was to to do multi-threading. So we could do threads equal not feeds, threads equals that. And then for i in range 10, t equals thread target, uh, and then we pass in the callable. And then we do threads.append t and then t dot start. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're creating a new thread and we're giving this callable as a target. So this thread will run that function. If you give it a function uh, that doesn't end, uh, the thread will just keep doing it. Like if you have, I don't know, say you had a game and you had one thread doing the music, one thread doing the graphics and one thread doing the calculations. If you had three, in theory, infinitely running um, functions in each thread would just be busy uh, doing that. This is the same thing, it's just obviously this will end. And then when it does end, uh, so in threads, we need to join. We need the thread to join. So I believe this then uh, joins the thread back into the main um, right, into the main thread and I believe it returns any uh, arguments and, that, and, and all that stuff. So if we did that, we ran it again, we would see that it takes 3.74 seconds. 
So that's, what, five hundredths of a second faster than if we were to run it serially, and we've done 3.76 seconds. Now, if you've seen my video on the gill, uh, you'll know why that is. It's because essentially threads, when it comes to CPU intensive work, tend to do things pretty serially. Um, so if you haven't seen that video, I would recommend going and watching that because it will give a more detailed explanation of why threading isn't any faster than doing it serially. But in that video, I did explain, um, or at least the, the presentation, I'm not sure how much of an emphasis I put on this, but the uh, the presentation uh, that was my source for that part of the video uh, made a point that I.O. bound work, so things where you're waiting for the operating system to load a file, or if you're sending a network request off and you're waiting for it to come back, uh, threads don't get locked up anywhere near as hard when doing IO bound work. And I'm going to show you uh, that that is the case. So if we do do IO work and then if we just do URL open and then we do HTTPS, oh god, what am I doing? Uh, YouTube.com. We pass in IO work as our target. Uh, if we were to, well, actually, if we were to then do this serially, so if I just comment all this out, well, actually, if I comment all this out like that, and then do do IO work, and then run that. So this is doing all the requests serially. So we can see it takes 3.27 seconds to access the YouTube uh, main page 10 times. If we did it in a thread, or if we did it in threads, like so, it takes 0 0.49 seconds. So you see in this instance, uh, threading actually had a huge performance benefit. And that's because it's not doing any CPU work. It's, you know, a lot of the stuff it's doing is just waiting for a response to come back. Or in the case of file IO, it's waiting for the file to be opened. It's not actually doing anything. It's when things get busy that threads get tied up. Before we move on from threading, I do want to quickly talk about locks because locks are quite an important part of threading. So if I were to do something like print and then start and then print uh, end, and here we run this again, uh, we can see that each thread starts and then you know all the threads end before, um, well, all the threads start before any of them end. That's what I'm trying to say. So you can see that you know, this, is, this is how the threads are working. Uh, in this case, it's fine, we don't need to worry about that, but there are instances, especially when it comes to CPU bound work, where things may need to be done in a certain order, and of course you may end up in race conditions if you don't do things properly. And one way to get around it is by using a lock. So we can create a lock, and we need to create a kind of a, a global object, because if you create a lock for every single thread, then they're all just gonna use their own lock and it's not gonna do anything. So you need to create a global lock, and then you could just use the, uh, the context manager, so with lock, you can do that. Uh, so the thread will uh, acquire the lock, and the lock, I think, will just know what thread is doing. It's all a bit magic, what goes on here, I think. Uh, so the thread, uh, or the lock will know which thread has acquired the lock, and then it will run, and then once you exit out of the uh, the context manager, the lock will release, and another thread will be able to grab it. Do this again. We can see that we're essentially just running it serially now. Um, and it completes in 2.99 seconds, where before it took 3.2 seconds. So it is still a little bit quicker than doing it serially somehow. Um, but you can see with the lock, it, it it sort of makes it run serially at that point. But now that we've talked a little bit about threading, I want to talk about multiprocessing. And believe it or not, the interface is pretty much the same. Um, so the only difference you need is from multiprocessing import process. And then you'd, you know, have different naming conventions. You could even call this workers and get away with calling it exactly the same thing if you really wanted to. But you have your process, you have a target, which in this case, I'm going to change that back to CPU work just so we can see it go. P.start and then for P in process, P.join once it's all over. Um, and then, yeah. So if I run this... We can see that it runs a lot faster. So we're now running our CPU. So this is our CPU work. So if you remember with threading, this still took like 3.8 seconds. With multiprocess, it can take 0 0.63 seconds because we're now actually using multiple cores. And in the case of my M1, we're using 10, core, uh, 10 cores. So we are using every single core this thing has. And every single core is doing the work at the same time, which is not the case in threading because it doesn't have to thread. Um, it doesn't have to thread switch anywhere near as much. Now you may be wondering, 
why not just use multiprocesses all the time? And this is where this benchmark script comes in. So this was actually written by a friend of mine um, a little while ago. I have added some extra stuff and I've modified one or two things uh, to make it work better in, in my case. So I've added this IO work bit. Uh, I've added something, yeah, I've added the callable, uh, but this was a, a, a script that he wrote uh, that he's allowed me to use. And it essentially compares threading versus multiprocessing really well uh, in terms of both speed and memory uh, usage as well. So we have four test cases down here. The first of which uh, is a thread doing CPU work. Second is multiprocessing doing CPU work. Third is a thread doing uh, IO work. And the fourth is multiprocessing doing IO work. And if we run this now, take a little while. The CPU work is a bit more intensive. You can see it's a, it's a little bit more like comprehensive as well. So the CPU work is a little bit more flashy. The IO work uh, fetches more than one URL. So it's, it's a little bit clearer about what it's doing. Everything's done. So if I move this up, once everything's done, it outputs this nice little, uh, well, I was going to say table. It's not quite a table, but it's a, it's a nice block of information with the methods. So in this case, we use the thread, the callable completion time, the current memory usage and the peak memory usage. Uh, and you can see when it comes to CPU bound work, that threads are a lot slower. So a thread took 8.17 seconds, uh, multiprocessing took 0 0.24 seconds, but the memory usage was about 10 times higher on multiprocessing. And that's strangely correlative, you may think, to the fact that we've spawned 10 processes. Uh, and that's because uh, a multiprocessing, every time a process is spawned, it's a brand new Python process. Like it's, it's almost like starting up 10 scripts manually. And while that does mean that, you know, one process can use one core each, and as such, you get true multi-core parallelism because you are, you know, utilizing all your cores, it does mean that you have the memory consumption that goes with having 10 separate processes, as opposed to just having 10 threads with, you know, one global state, one loaded interpreter, etc., etc. The interesting results to me is that the IO work, the multiprocessing was actually faster in these benchmarks and significantly less memory um, consuming, which I'm pretty sure it was the other way around when I did this off camera. And I did run the results again and it's come out with the same thing. So I will run, I will, bleh, I can't talk today. I will run the results off camera um, to see if I get the same thing, to see if maybe the recording is like screwing something up somewhere. But I am sure that the threading not only was faster, but was less memory consuming as well. I think that's the right term. I've said that twice. I've doubted myself both times, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, the threading at the very least is a lot closer to the multiprocessing than it was before, even though the memory consumption, I think is, is well, it's just wild. I think it's wrong. <laughs> I think these benchmarks are wrong, uh, but I will confirm that uh, once I stop recording and I'll, I'll let you know. If, if these are right, the multiprocessing perhaps is always the way to go. Uh, but when the interpreters come in, in Python 3.13, well, they're already here in 3.12, but the Python module doesn't come in until 3.13, you'll have sort of the benefits of both. So it would be, so you'll have multiple interpreters loaded, but you won't have multiple Python processes loaded. So it would be like threading in that you only have a single process, but it would be like multi, uh, multi-processing in the sense that you have multiple interpreters. And this will allow you, so each interpreter will have one um, core and each interpreter will also have a single gill um, or its own gill rather than a shared gill across the whole lot, which means that every interpreter will be able to properly utilize uh, multiple cores and you'll only need one process to do it. The only downside is that the, the, uh, the implementation is a lot different. So where um, in here, for example, the multiprocess is probably a very example, you have this process object and you give it a target and then you can define all your things up here. And it's all, it's a pretty clean interface actually. And this has been around since Python 2 point whatever. And it was basic, it's basically unchanged since then. Maybe a few things have been added, a few things in the back end have been optimized. But I was looking at the old Python 2 docs because I wanted to see if multiprocessing had a really jank implementation before. And it doesn't, it's, it was always really clean. It still is really clean. And the, the interpreter's implementation is a bit weird. 
So we'll have to see how that goes, but I'll talk about that more when it actually comes out. If you like the video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions about what you've seen here or any ideas on videos you want me to do in the future, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so either by becoming a patron or a member. One pound a month on either and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video when we do something really cool. So I'll see you for that.